My name is uh, Chris Neal, um, Marconi Heritage Group uh, and Old Morsham and Central Chelmsford Community Trust. We're here at uh, Hall Street um, on the junction with Mildmay Road uh, and we're looking at Marconi's very first factory. Um, Marconi was only aged 24 when he set this um, factory up uh, in 1899. Uh, and it was their main centre of manufacturing all the way through until 1912 when they then built, because of the increased space that they needed, a brand new factory built from scratch in New Street in Chelmsford which they built in a mere 17 weeks. But it all began here in Hall Street. As it says on the blue plaque, it was established in 1899, the first radio factory in the world by the Wireless Telegraph and Signal Company Limited, later known as Marconi's Wireless Telegraph Company Limited. Marconi actually didn't want his name in the title of um, the business, but he was persuaded later on by the directors, hence the change to Marconi's Wireless Telegraph. We call it a radio factory, that's really modern parlance. When all this started, it was called wireless because communications at that time were all done, electronic communications or electrical communication was all done through cables and wires. This became wireless. Through these modern doors. Now we can see the full extent of the ground floor of the factory. Uh, it does extend a bit beyond the end there where you can see the exit sign. Those are some false walls that were put in, as I say, by the water company, um, but those will be cleared out. Uh, well, of course, the, uh, the factory ceased to be um, used by Marconi really during or, the, or at the end of the First World War. So all of the original um, equipment uh, and artefacts um, have all left this area. Um, but what we can see that is re that was recognisable in the old photographs are all of these windows. So these are the original windows um, and as a consequence of the restoration of the building, these windows have to remain and look as they do now. Although there is an, a major amount of restoration work needed to make them good. An iceberg, send out the call for assistance. The regulation distress call, sir? Yes, at once. There's our position. Looking down the building, we can see out to the left is Mildmay Road, and over the other side is the Woolpack. Very handy for a drink. And it's just possible that um, when they completed one of their orders, that Marconi and his superintendents may have taken the workforce over there for a nice drink. The time, 12:24. An Associated Press dispatch crossed the news desk of the New York Times. The Titanic was sinking. My God, I don't believe it. In, in this building was made the very first equipment that Marconi used for his transmitting a wireless message across the, the Atlantic Ocean. Also in this building would have been made the parts and the systems for the wireless system that was used on the Titanic, amongst many other ships that were fitted with wireless systems. And as we all know from our history books, 700 lives were saved on the Titanic, all due to the fact that the ship had a wireless system made here in this building. Time, 12.45. At the very stern end of the Titanic, quartermaster George Thomas Rowe, facing his watch, reported an unusual sight. Sir. Sir. What we're we'll doing now is going through here and then up the stairs and we will go and see the upper floor, which is, there was a floor in the building during the time that it was the wireless factory, uh, but this isn't the original floor anymore, this is a replacement floor that was put in by the water company, so the floor to ceiling heights are a bit different from what they were when you look at the old photographs. So 
now we're into the um, upper floor. Again, you can see those windows. Um, now we'll look up into the roof void. And you can see the struts uh, and uh, braces and things there, which will be recognizable um, from the early photographs. Hold out here. Well, sir, I, I just saw it. Quartermaster Rosa, Sternwatch. What, sir? And one hour and ten minutes after the Titanic hit, Quartermaster Rowe became the last man to learn what was going on. Yes, sir, right away, sir. And you can see here is the, um, these, these pitch pine um, beams here on the, uh, just here, which uh, again would have been original. Uh, there would have been a lot more pitch pine beams in the building, but again, they were stripped out some years ago. Right, as we look out of the window, this was also part of the original Hall Street site. Um, it had a generator house, had a way back when it was a silk mill, before Marconi uh, moved in. Um, there was a steam engine out here, which powered the silk mill. But all of this now has been cleared and, uh, and redeveloped. Um, and you can see the new houses that have gone into here. But on the left-hand side here, you can see the back of Alfred Cottage. Uh, and beyond these buildings is the old, um, one of the old engine sheds, but we can't see it from this view. A lot of the lighter work went on upstairs, and I think they did also some of their research and development work up here. Downstairs, as will be seen when we uh, look at some of the old photographs, is the more the heavy machinery, um, the lathes uh, and the mills and things like that, that they would have used for turning big lumps of metal. At 12.36 in the wireless room of the Titanic, Operator Phillips received his first encouragement. She's 58 miles away, sir. And she says she's coming hard. 58 miles, they'll be too late. So we're now walking down to the uh, north end of the building uh, into some of the more modern uh, replacement facilities that were put in by the water company. Um, we can see the wreckage of what were the toilets uh, and the other staircase here. There's, there's, there's not a moment to lose. We must get the women and children off first. Will you hurry along there, please? Will you, will you lower away? Lower away there. Hurry, will you? If you get the hell out of the way, I'll be able to do something. You want me to lower away quickly? You'll have me thrown the whole lot of them. There had been no need for a lifeboat trailer aboard an unsinkable ship. No procedure for abandoning ship. There's another plaque over there. So we've got the plaque on each side. So we're properly labelled. And we're just walking down now. And um, we're between uh, Alfred's cottage and uh, the building. So there we are. Essex Water Company. Ah, so that's the plaque for the Essex Water Company. It opened in 1982 as the Mid-Essex Divisional Offices of the Essex Water Company by Sir Robert Telford, Chairman of the Marconi Company Limited. Well, there we go. Still on board, Operator Phillips, Operator Bride, Captain Smith. Sparkers week. Men, you have done your full duty, you can do no more. Abandon your cabin, it's every man for himself now. There's still a little power left, sir. No. You look out for yourselves. I release you. That's the way of it at this kind of time.